Hello YouTube. In an uh, old installment of the hypertrophy series, I spoke to you about using intensity not just as a mean to progress and program, but also as a way to assess risk to reward ratio. And in this video, I'm going to take the same principle, but use volume for a different mean than just muscle hypertrophy. So we're going to use volume in this case to determine the amount of work you can be doing so that you reach the maximum threshold of muscle fiber damage and you make the best gains you could potentially make. And this is going to be the principle of maximum recoverable volume. It's in the name. Um, and this is very important for a simple reason is because muscle gains are made in the long term. And if you think about it, if you constantly are shortchanging yourself, or if you are constantly overreaching, then you are hurting your ability to get bigger. Why? You're either not giving enough stimulus to the muscle, which might potentially lead to uh, stores or plateaus, or you're giving it too much and therefore you are potentially opening up yourself for injuries, or you're just going to regress. So how do we use that notion of volume to ensure that we are constantly going to be on the, on the path to success when it comes to hypertrophy? Well, there are many ways to assess if you're recovered. Uh, all of them are going to hinge on your ability to listen to your body. But at the end of the day, listening to your body is sort of an abstract concept. And I understand that a lot of people want more than that. So a way for me is going to be to keep a very a close look at your program and at your expected range of progression. If you have a good program, you have a good grasp on your rep ranges and you know uh, the, the, the speed at which you should progress. For me, if I pick a day on a calendar uh, two months from now, I should be able to say roughly how much my deadlift will be by that time. Why? Because my program is set up in a way that I am guaranteed progression. If I do not get that progression, then something went wrong. And this is where you use volume to assess that ability to progress and the maximum amount you should be doing. I can tell you for a fact that if you're not able to make that steady progress, then most likely there is an issue with your volume, either because there's too little or there's too much. So that's a way that uh, the on paper information is going to inform the feedback that your body might not be giving you. You also can be doing some tests based on your strength or your ability to do repetitions. And that is going to be much more immediate and it's not as effective in a sense as doing it on paper. Why? Because it's still going to cost you a potential training session. What do I mean by that? Let's say you did some squats with 225, all right? When you redo the session, you cannot get as many reps as you did on the first try. This is catastrophic. Why? Not only did you not retain strength, but you even regressed. So it means that the muscle, uh, the muscle fiber damage you created during that training session either was not even enough for you to conserve your strength or was too much that you regressed. Once you're there, you know something went wrong for a fact, but keep in mind, it could also be that your frequency made it so that there is another lift or another training session in between the two that in a sense cannibalized the energy that should have been uh, assigned to the squat and that made it so that your performance was subpar. When that happens, it is now up to you as an inspector, a detective, to find exactly what went wrong. And usually, unless your program is super complex, which it shouldn't be, it's very easy to find the culprit. Uh, for the most part, lifts that are going to cannibalize, as I said, other lifts are lifts that are similar in nature. For example, a heavy deadlift is definitely going to take away from your ability to perform heavy squats. This is going to be programming pitfalls that you need to be able to avoid. But sometimes the only way to realize that you actually made a mistake is to find out that your ability to perform volume is not there. You can also translate the volume by strength. 
if your strength is not there on the day and you cannot get as many repetitions, this is a clear sign that you are not recovered and that you're not progressing. And we need to avoid that as much as possible. So that utilization of volume to determine uh, the ability of the body to recover from it is an application that can be either on paper or on the go. They both work and you're going to have to use both. But the more you advance, the more you're going to realize that there are so many variables that come into play that it isn't enough because it's not taking into consideration recovery times. And this is where, sadly, we need to go back to using the body as a tool to assess whether or not we're working properly. You cannot really tell if you are not going to be able to perform on a certain day because of a sore leg. It doesn't work like that. Uh, it's not just the way you feel, just because you, you feel in an excellent shape or because you felt tired, both of these means might not give you clear indications that you're recovered or not. What is going to be 100% across the board certain is that if you have all of the variables controlled, if the day is programmed properly, and if you're able to replicate it with the right warm-ups, the right form, and everything similar, you should see progression, and the progression is uh, should be the one that you wrote on paper. This is when the two methods come hand in hand. And for me, this is the most beneficial way to do that. You have a program with rep ranges that you know exactly where the next progression is going to be. And then on that very same day, you apply that progression. If it does not work, you have multiple ways to go around it. You either decide that the progression scheme was fine but that you messed up with the technique or the recovery, or if you think that everything was perfectly done on your hand, on your end, then you have to go back to the program and find a way around it. This is how you combat plateaus, by viewing them as something other than plateaus. They are, in truth, when we're talking about bodybuilding, of course, the inability to recover from a volume that was either too lacking to create progress or too much and created too much stress that did not allow your body to grow from it. And once that is seen as a simple programming issue, you won't be uh, facing the issue that many people have where they see a plateau as that unsurmountable thing, when in reality, it's very easy to walk around it. You manipulate volume and intensity. But to recognize that that plateau exists, I suggest that you apply the methods I described in this video. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.